In another Ask TACMAN video, we discussed assay efficiency and how to calculate it. But how does efficiency really impact our experiments? Or as Julie Case at George Washington University asks, why is it important? Does the efficiency for all of my targets have to be the same? Okay, let's start with a quick refresher on efficiency. The aim for all assays is to be 100% efficient which means there is an exact doubling of your template every cycle. We previously found that this can be calculated through a dilution series and the following equation. In order to use the delta delta CT method for relative quantification, the efficiency of the target and endogenous control must be approximately equal, meaning that the assay efficiency should be within 10% of each other. If the range is greater than 10%, then you need to be aware that when you evaluate fold changes, the unequal PCR efficiencies will correlate to a decrease in the accuracy of the calculated fold change. Keep in mind that Life Technologies has well over 1 million pre-designed assays, which have been in silico validated to be up to 100% efficient, so the efficiency calculation is not necessary. However, if you do check and find the efficiencies outside of the acceptable range, then there's likely something from the sample or setup that is throwing things off. So what happens if my efficiency is 150%? Your first thought might be, wow, my assay rocks. That's good, right? Well, actually, no. It is not possible to be over 100% efficient. So something else is going on here. Let's review some causes of high or low efficiency and how to fix them. First, let's take a look at what's going on with efficiency over 100%. The most common cause of efficiencies greater than 100% are inhibitors. This can be carryover from the sample itself, such as heparin or humic acids. Or another source could be contaminants from the RNA or DNA isolation, such as SDS or phenol. Inhibition means that even as you add more template, the CT value does not shift to earlier cycles as you would expect it to. This flattens out the efficiency plot, resulting in a lower slope and thus efficiency over 100%. Inhibition is worse in more concentrated samples, and so you can often see an improvement in the slope by diluting the sample. This is actually a good way to recognize when the inhibitors are the problem. For example, if you made tenfold dilutions of your sample, then the delta CT between each point should be about 3.3. When inhibitors are present, we see that the delta CT between our samples is about 2.8, but returns to 3.3 for the most dilute sample point. So what should we do? Go back and check the quality of the RNA sample again by doing an A260 over 280 reading. It should be about two. If not, either repurify the sample or try again with a different method. If a new sample prep method does not solve the issue, you may have a sample type that is inherently difficult to work with. In this case, you may consider using a qPCR master mix that is more tolerant to the presence of inhibitors, such as our TACMAN environmental master mix. So what about efficiency less than 100%? This means that your template is not doubling every cycle. This is typically caused by something being suboptimal in the reaction, either not enough enzyme, DNTP, primer, or possibly design issues. By using commercially available reagents, you can minimize the worry about these components, as the optimization in concentrations has already been worked out for you. In addition, our TACMAN gene expression assays have already gone through a bioinformatics check for specificity, so you can be confident that the design work is sound. However, if you are using a homebrew mix or assay, then you may need to re-examine these parameters. Consider changing the primer or magnesium concentration and reevaluate your primers for appropriate melting temperatures and specificity. Okay, there's one last element to check, and that is the data points themselves. The alignment of the experimental points on the standard curve should be verified. Here's a good curve as an example. Use the value of R squared to evaluate the quality of the results. Look for a value of 0.99 and higher. This is a good indicator of your pipetting skills for your technical replicates. So let's check some other data for outliers. Hmm, here's one that looks suspect. If the standard curve looks good, except the point representing the most concentrated sample of the standard curve occurs at a later CT value than expected, then it is likely that this dilution point is showing inhibition. 
Let's omit the point and reanalyze. We can also see outliers on the opposite end of the curve, coming from our most dilute samples. These high CT outliers are generally the result of a low copy reaction. They are ordinarily seen at CT values above 35 cycles and can increase or decrease the slope. This is normal for samples representing the one copy range and can constitute the limit of detection for your assay. If you have one of these types of points in your curve, you can omit and update the data. Aha! Notice the improvement in our efficiency. If you've got real-time PCR questions, remember to just ask TACMAN on Facebook, Twitter, or at lifetechnologies.com forward slash ask TACMAN. Thanks for watching. Thank you.